The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Bowser Chapman here on this Monday. This is the last week of March. This is Monday, the 27th of March, and we're looking at the Dow 202 at 32,440. The, the, the daily, this is the daily on the left, daily chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly chart are really telling us a, a, a series of stories with each one being a little bit different. For instance, the daily chart says, Lower lows and lower highs, that's a down move. But if there is a move this week towards the 32,900 level and preferably into the 33,000s, that's a big ask, but it could be done, that would say maybe we've got a fulcrum right there on this low of 31,429 back on the uh, 15th of, uh, back on the uh, 15th of March. And that we're now moving towards the upside. The tide has changed. It hasn't yet changed, but it's, it's attempting to. The weekly chart says, I've spent, ever since I broke out of this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone back on the 11th, the week of the 11th of November, I've spent all my time closing above the green line, which was resistance and now is support. Therefore, if there is that move, into the 33,000s, we're, we're going back into that rectangle, which is really very important. But until we do that, there's a lot of work to be done. The MACD is still weak. The stochastic's down 15, uh, 18 percent. On balance uh, volume is turning up. But that nine pink, nine period moving average is a long way to go to cross positive. Can be done, needs to be done, hasn't been done. Weekly chart says, well, this is the start of an H pattern. But it's stalled with so far on a monthly basis with the uh, price almost at the open of the, of the month. In other words, we open the month at uh, 30. Oops, if I can just get that. Now, why is that not showing? Hello? Oh, there it is. At 32,656. And we closed at 32,432 with a long wick on either side. So it makes it really important, and it's L. That means that the nine period moving average for two months now has been above the, the black line. The, the green is positive. <clears throat> and yet, you've got a W formation in the weekly, in the monthly chart that needs to see this right side cup formation push the green nine period exponential moving average. That's the differential, uh, nine period differential above the red the slow moving average. As I'm saying that, I'm thinking to myself, wow, I spent so much time with Dave White, late Dave White, talking about these nine period moving averages and the exp how, how important it was for me using the exponential and all that. And he developed his nine oscillator, which he used uh, very proficiently, um, really t a terrific use of a particular technique uh, that he just formulated from the evidence that he was looking at. So there I am looking at this, I'm saying, so the evidence looking at the daily chart is still weak, but the, the MACD is starting to move up, it's cross positive. The nine is trying its best to cross positive, if it hasn't yet. The weekly chart is still negative in all, uh, in all sequences. The uh, monthly chart has had at least one part of it turn up. So there's a real mixed picture. But wait a minute. If you look at the S&P, well, I'm doing this because it's Monday, and we need to get a sense of what can happen this week. You've got your Chapman Wave inside. The, I, I don't want to spend time on this right now, but this is what I call the inside track repellent zone. It's in a falling axe formation. That just simply means that there are lower highs and much lower lows, and then it forms a kind of a cup formation, trying its best to move to the upside. We'll see if that can happen. I think it is. I, I mean, I spent some time over the weekend because I wasn't able to do my video because I was out of town, um, and I must say I was in Philadelphia. I haven't spent time in Philadelphia for all, just a long, long time. What a, what a charming city. I really liked it. There's a lot of brickwork, 
uh, and anything that's put up in in the in say in the uh, uh, what was the Society Hill area? Yeah, uh, that that it needs to even if it's modern, there's certain aspects that conform to the uh, to the patterns of the brick buildings. And it's just really nicely done. Even the modern, I love the modern buildings, uh, different designs. I was very impressed. Um, I, um, I like sometimes to spend a little more time there. Anyway, so what we're looking at is the S&P daily. All it needs to do is to break above uh, at 39.94. It needs to get back into the 4,030s. It shouldn't be difficult to do. And if it can get to do that, it could go to leg D above 4,039.49, the high of the 22nd of March. I don't think that's a big ask at this particular point. Um, look, the MACD is good. Stochastic is starting to rise. Not great, but it's okay. The, the on-balance volume daily is moving up nicely. The 9 is today, as I said, crossed over. I want, I want to see that through the close today, first time you've gotten an L, meaning 9 over the 14 to go green, since uh, it turned negative back on the 22nd of February. So uh, that's going to be very important. And that's going to help the weekly chart because the weekly chart is being green all the way through ever since it flipped to positive uh, back on the sixth of week of the 6th of January, around about the 3,800 area. So this is very important. And the weekly chart um, says I've held the inside track repellent zone. It's become the propellant zone. So far, that's good. The MACD is just barely positive. That's okay. Well, I just I say oh, barely positive. Now, Stochastic Weekly is turning up at 40%. Needs a little bit of work. And the monthly chart, I'm going to guess, say we've got all of the month to go, five days, <laughs> before I talk about the monthly chart. But wait a minute. This is going to be really interesting. QQQ, um, all the Qs need to do, they're only up a dollar right now at 31.92. All they need to do is to break one penny above the high that was made five, four or five sessions ago of 315.25, and that will start leg C. At that particular point, in just pattern, I'm, not, I'm talking about patterns themselves, the NDX once again starts to become a leader and especially if you're looking at the weekly chart and it's not even come close to the 9 and 14 period moving averages for a couple of weeks now. And the monthly chart finally is starting to improve. Not great at all, but it is improving. IWM, I'm just going to spend a moment on IWM because these uh, Russell, the iShares Russell 2000 ETFs, the small caps, are not doing very well. It's trading at 173.47, up $1.69. Best percentage out of all of them but it keeps doing that and then it fails. So, so far, it needs to get to the 183 level by the first week of April to, for me to say, hey, now the Russell 2000 is starting to move better. Okay, now I need to go to gold. Gold was down very sharply. Is it still? Yeah, it's down 34 at um, 1949. If you put it together with silver, remember, the way I looked at this is that gold was reflecting the hazardous moment or moments in the financials. That uh, I might be wrong. That's just the way I'm looking at it. Because you didn't see quite the same movement in silver, but then silver likes to catch up. So silver's caught up a little bit, but it's already in leg D. Pulling back could make a peak D today. So I'm just suggesting to you that the metals, the precious metals right now, just are not quite as important as they had been. Had been. And look at the XLF. XLF is a tempting. <laughs> it's done this many times before. Go around. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, we're back and uh, we're looking at the Dow, giving back some of the early gains, Dow up 182, SP's up 17. I, I, I've not been a great fan of these big moves at the upside early in the morning lately. I, I prefer if it's down and then it closes higher. Uh, going up says, ooh, you've got a chance now that you could pull back at least into mid-session and then maybe later in the day, if, if everything holds, then you could suddenly see a big move to the upside. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at the market right now. Just in, within a range, big swings, uh, it just the yo-yo continues up, down, up, down. It's a, a cup formation, arch formation, rotating like a sine wave. So the XLF, the financials now is up 39 cents, 31.38. Uh, I had a really big move from the 36s, uh, almost 37, down to the 30 level, 30 and a half. Uh, oh, a lot needs to be done in this particular department. But I'm looking at this, and I'm as I did some work over the weekend. The, it, it appeared to me that if you look at certain sectors and then certain stocks within the sector, quite a few of them are ignoring completely the overall market downtrend. They're in uptrends and they, they're stable. They're doing very nicely. If you're looking at the area, even within the areas of, say, even the financials, there are some that are holding quite well. But if you go to different sectors, I think that's where you get the evidence. For instance, SMHs, semiconductors, look, down today, 41 cents at 254.21, kind of stuck in this range. All they need to do is pop one penny above the SMH, that's the SMH, the semiconductor ETF, market vector semiconductor ETF, above uh, 261.92. It parallels the high that was made a couple of days ago at 93.93. It stars leg C. And that's all you need to see. And if you consider what's going on in the market, look at that weekly chart. That is, hey, that's very good action when you consider what the market's been doing. If you look at the monthly chart, it's a very big improvement. It's a, almost a 50% retracement, 318 uh, high, uh, down to the 196 low. And now we're at 254, kind of halfway. That's I think that's that's 
It just says that there's a rotation going on. Don't get caught up. I was talking to someone over the weekend um, who uh, has a bond company. And that's not the bond, uh, the jail bond. This is a bond market. Um, and um, just shake, shaking his head saying, wow, I don't, I don't know what that, the Fed is really caught. I mean, we all know this between a rock and a hard place. What can they do? Um, his fear was that rates would just keep going up and going up because there's just so much debt. It's the debt part of it. But I think that's a, a, I'm not going to disagree with someone who's you know, trading huge, huge amounts every, every minute of the day. I'm going to say I agree. But when it comes to timing, I think the timing in between is going to be very different, that you can't just put a blanket statement down and expect that it's all going to unfold as you're speaking. No, I think it's a process. And this process is telling me, and this is what we're trying to do, at least I'm trying to do for my subscribers to my opening call, we selectively going into the market in certain areas. Uh, and now I'm widening the stops because now I think I... The last two weeks has given me a sense of the trend of these particular instruments, and now I can make the stops a little wider. I, that's my feeling right now, because I don't now I don't want to get whipped, whipped sword, and then the, and then the, the price of whatever it is that I'm following goes even higher. I want to take a little bit more risk, and that's that's a big difference to what I'd been doing before. And I think subscribers are going to feel feel. I'm hoping that they feel the benefit so far. I, I, it's working out that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the IYT. The IYT is the transports. So the transports took a huge hit, and that's to me this is part of the whole panoply of looking at the different sectors. This is the IWM, the iShares. Oh, I love this. iShares Dow Jones. Transportation Average Index Fund called the Transports. So within that context, it's 247 back on the February the 2nd, and lo and bold on Friday is trading at 2, I think it was 212. What did it do? 212? Yeah, 212.80 was the low. And now it's at 270 and attempting a rally. So that's that's the overall transports. Look at jets. This is the U.S. There are big move down, and that kind of replicates what we're looking at in the IYT. But if you go to CSX, if you go to the rails, the rails within that, I, I, I think in the transportation, I believe they have Federal Express as well. Look, Federal Express is at. Um, the most recent highs from the October low uh, a couple of a week ago, it was making recovery highs. Oh, it doesn't tell you about the monthly chart, which is up in, in the 320-ish area and plummeted down to the 140s. But it does say that there's a big difference. So I'm looking at this and saying, be selective. If you're selective, you have a greater chance of being long. If you're not being selective, uh, there's a chance that you're in the, the crossfire of what could really be um, taken down. Uh, in the den, just a quick mention of Nike. Uh, uh, not quite strange on this green day. Um, Nike, it's very interesting. So Nike is trading at, Nike B stock trading, sport and sportswear trading at 119 down one. But if you look at the weekly chart, even though it's way off the highs, look at this, it's trying to form some kind of a cup formation. So once again, here we are in the sportswear area, something very different. I heard a ping, and I'm going to go right here to see what the ping is. We've got Mike in Kansas City. Uh, Mike, how are you? I'm great, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Hey, um... I've uh, I've been very busy in my uh, professional life lately. I haven't been listening to you like I used to, but I think uh, there's one thing that you you commented on for. I mean, I've been listening to you for like 15 years. The Japanization of our bonds, and I was just curious with you know the rampant interest rates in the last year, if you think that that's dead or or that's still something that that could happen in the future or. Or that game is over, considering kind of the ramp that's gone on. That's gone on. I really appreciate it. So, hey, thanks. Uh, thank you for listening, and I've always appreciated your calls and your and your listening. So, 
for, I mean, since 1990s, I've been talking about the United States will Japanese. my thinking was that Japan, the United States would Japanese bond yields by going to try to also go to zero. And that would be almost a competition amongst countries. Well, we saw that about a year, about, I think it's now more than a year ago, uh, we made that peak D back in 2020 in March at 179.90 in the TLT. Then we pulled back and then we started this arch formation. As we we're making that arch formation, I believe it was a little over December, a little over a year ago from December. So it was somewhere in this period here I said, you know what, everything I'm looking at says to me that there's a really good chance we are done with that whole phase of the Japanization of our bond yields. And I'll talk about what, what I thought could happen. Uh, if, you, if you've got a moment to listen, I'll be right back and we'll talk about it. Mike, we'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 189, Basel Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour with Mike in Kansas City. We'll talk about the Japanization of our bond yields as it passed. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, boys, we're back. Mike is still there. Uh, not sure. Let me see. Uh, so, anyway, I, I, if you're here, just say hi. While I'm talking, that's fine. As long as I know you're there, I know you're listening. But anyway, so this is the issue. For quite some time, and I, when I say quite some time, I would say uh, I can't. I'm not as precise as I should be because I know it was just something I, I would rant about periodically. But I was saying because the market is moving up from the 2009 low, it was really important for um, the Fed 
to say, okay, you can give it a few years, and then they got to like 2.13, there was a consolidation in 2.13, even in 2.14, I was saying, isn't it, wouldn't it be right with the demand in business for bonds to be able to raise the yield? I mean, that's what you do in business when there's a demand, you have the opportunity to raise prices. You don't have to you know, push them much higher, but proportionally to what you think the market can bear. And yet the Fed kept the rates lower. And I couldn't understand why that happened because it was an aberration to, at least for me, the thinking of uh, demand and supply. And in this particular instance, you can see that as we went to that uh, TLT high back in, uh, uh, that was March of 2020, and the TYX, I'm just going to go to the TYX for the moment. I should go to the tenure. But oops, I've typed it into the DEN. Or well, once I'm typing into the DEN, I might as well do the TNX. TNX, I hope I've got it all updated. Yep, I have. You can see as it screamed higher, uh, that was 2020, 32.48, 3.248. It did come down sharply. Uh, this is the yield um, into the March 2020 low of 3.98 or 39.80. Um, and then it started to rally. And that was only because that huge low that was made in 2020, and we are still actually along the diamonds from that exact day of the low. Um, you, the Fed got scared. And that's not the jobs charter. The, ch the charter of the Fed is to really analyze and be very specific. And they should have said, we are going to raise rates according to the supply and the demand, and they did not do that. So the answer is, I think there's been a seminal change. I think that change is going to be uh, uh, um, noticed by the market. It is right now. But at the same time, I think all of those, those of you listening out there who have been in the market long enough, you just know <laughs> that the market adapts. If yields are going to go up, the market will adapt to that. What it doesn't adapt to is to crises that come by in greater frequency. And that's what we're starting to see. So an answer to your, to your kind of your statement and your question, Mike, I'm going to say that we are done with the Japanization of bond yields. It could return at some point in another form. But the whole idea that I'd, it was 30, I, I have to tell you, it was probably over 30 years that I've been talking about the Japanization of bond yields. And because it's not a daily thing that I was talking about in terms of timing, it's something that kind of got ignored. But I made it a theme for years, decades, the Japanization of our bond yields. In other words, going to zero. Now I think that tide has turned. And what's really important about it is that now it's a way more different. This is what I was talking about, this bond guy. Um, it's so much more difficult for them to do it under these conditions when, in fact, they don't have the wind at their back. In fact, there's a, there's a wind right in front of them. And yes, they can do it. They should do it. But it's going to be much tougher. But markets are adaptable. They get used to it. I don't think it's going to be very long before the market decides, OK, well, there'll be higher yields. And we'll just move on and they will find that's the reason why I'm saying this is the opportunity to find certain areas that might be affected, but not as much as some of the others. And that's really what I'm saying. So the answer is, I think it's done. It could be come back in, in form A and form B and form C. But the, the whole thesis, that whole mega tidal move, the super tanker can't turn on a dime. It's taking its time. It's a not a, it's not a speedboat. It's taking its time to turn the corner. And yes, it should be rates going higher. That's all I can say. And that would be um, momentarily we could see little bits of a, a decline in the yields. But my thinking is that they're going to remain elevated, at least for a while, at least for quite a while. So we'll see. I, I, that's all I can do. And I'm not an economist. I'm only doing it from experience and looking at the charts. So I just wanted to show you, we did make a, an unusual peak G in the 10 minute chart. There was this double top that was made. One was just before eight o'clock. It was right there in the E mini at seven and 10 to, 10 to eight at 4,033.75. And then again, it went right back to four, 
1034 and 20. Yes, and 25, just 50 cents higher. With all the technicals failing, now we're pulling back. I'm suspecting that about 4,005, that's where you're going to see. Is there going to be some kind of support coming in? Dow's still up 137. The uh, S&P still up eight. But the, as I say, I don't like those moves to the down to the upside early in the morning, and then when the market opens, they continue because it seems to me there are so many people wanting to short. Now it's going to be the opposite. There are so many people now taking opportunities, saying, "Aha! I told you so." That I think later in the day we'll see another rally. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Doesn't mean to say that it's going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me. So within that context, what I am looking at here is, let's just get out of this. I, I never finished. I wanted to show you crude oil has been making lower lows and lower highs for quite some time. Now it's attempting to stabilize. It's in this rectangle right here. Remember I said one to one to the downside, could take it to on the continuous contract to 64, even 62, maybe even 60, but 62 was the area that I thought. We went down to 64, now trying to rally. But I think that crude oil is stuck in a range. Now this goes to the question that I was asked. Uh, and within that context, um, so, Mike in Kansas City said that he'd always heard me talking about the Japanization of our bond yields. When you're looking at crude oil, this is the way things sometimes work. So yields going higher says that it could see a slowdown in the economy, but a slowdown in the economy says, whoops, maybe the Fed should be lowering yields. So you see the dichotomy? When you're talking about crude oil, Crude oil keeps making lower lows and lower highs. Crude oil is telling us that there's a really good chance that the whole, oh, how can I put this? Yeah, the whole spectrum of the uh, war, Ukrainian Russian war, the whole idea of oil becoming scarcer and scarcer is not out there. And is it now because we're looking at? The economies around the world slowing down, and my suspicion, if I when I did a little work on this, and I wondered about this, because I mean, if anybody's wanted to get into a hotel recently, uh, <clears throat> wow, um, it's not easy, and the and and those prices are pretty high. Um, so when I look at this, I'm saying, okay, where is Marriott? Well, Marriott is up uh, pulling back but it's up near the all-time high of 195 it's at 156 well when i'm talking about it i'm talking about it in terms of the low that was made back in the uh, 130 area so it, it's it's more in the a little bit in the lower range of the halfway market but look at the syntas syntas is holding very nicely at 438 but if you look at high grade, and that says that the economy, there are a lot of people wanting to uh, get in those jobs. You look at high grade proper, it's in the lower range. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters, 30 days risk-free, with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So uh, I, I want to just do a little more of this, and then tomorrow I've got questions about stocks, and I'll get to those uh, tomorrow. Just general questions. So a, a question in the den was, uh, um, what would change your opinion on yields back to Japanization? And what I would say is this, that at some point in the next six to eight weeks, I think we're just going to get a plethora of really bad economic news in the sense that uh, the job list numbers are starting to climb. I'm already seeing it and I'm, I'm already hearing it from people um, in business that things are changing, actually have changed for some people quite dramatically. And I think that's going to be reflected. And then at that point, the the Fed might not do it, but they might say that they're going to, there's a chance that they uh, will uh, lower yields. But until you get that evidence, I don't see, I don't see how the Fed can change. They just do not want to change their modus operandi. They should not because... Um, I mean, they should not, in terms of their charter, whether they should or could or whatever else, in our thinking as a lay public, that's something completely different. As I said, I couldn't understand why they didn't raise rates for a long time. We would normalize things. You would have been paying a slightly higher premium. The market would have counted. Now the market is taking into account that there are going to be higher yields and it'll adjust. And it'll be, a, it'll be a big, maybe disappointment, not even a pleasant surprise, but a disappointment if the Fed suddenly says, oops, we're going to uh, lower yields because that says, oh, things are really not good. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a complex situation, at least for us. You can imagine how complex it is for the people who are getting in, at the Fed who are getting all this information. They're just getting inundated. And whatever your opinion was, it gets reinforced, whether it's for or against, you can see and, and uh, at some point, they'll all agree. Maybe that's the point where we say, oh, oh mistake. All right, so that's my answer. It will, the yields at some point should come down a little bit, um, but I don't know if it's that soon. Okay, next question was, oh, where did it go? Uh, <clears throat> and this is a question I'd like to get to right now, uh, just before I get to some stocks. Hi, Basil. Uh, how do you see the markets in the short term, two hour and daily charts? Uh, Dow or QQQ would be great. Uh, thanks, Kevin. So this, what I'm looking at here is, I, I'm not gonna just tell you our positions right now for subscribers. I just, uh, you know, we, we've got these positions, when you're just starting positions, uh, it's not fair on, on subscribers to uh, you know, yell that out. So I'm just going to say, this is what I'm looking at. In terms of the QQ, QQQ, the index 100. This cup formation holding well, making a little bit like a, a cup and handle, not one of my favorite patterns, but in fact, we did go higher than the 313.38, but didn't close above it. So for me, it negates the pure cup and handle formation. If it did make a high, I'd say, uh oh, but it did make a higher high. And it is, I, I can call it an alternate count, maybe a D, but that just, it, it, I, nothing fits. Because this low that was made uh, in the QQQ right there on the 
on March the 13th? Yeah, March the 13th at 285.19, uh, the MACD was turning up. The stochastic was already making a higher high. The unbalanced volume confirmed the rally to the upside. Everything here actually looks pretty decent, but I never negate the, the, the idea that when you're bumping to double top resistance, you've got to be careful. So this is what I'm saying to you, um, Kevin. What I need to see is a move into the 315.80 to 316.30 area. And it needs, I need speed. You know my rule 136, meaning a rest of one bar before you go to the next higher high or lower low. That's really, that tells you that you've got momentum to that, side, that particular trajectory. If it takes three bars, that's okay. If it takes four bars, you start to slow down. That's not a big change. If it takes six bars, it's almost like that move to the to the to the next higher leg up or leg down. It's almost like it restarts, and that should start a much bigger move because if it's just a single move up, especially at a double top, that's a problem. So I'm making it as clear as possible. I like what I see in the daily in the QQQ. I like what I see in the weekly, but I do see the chance that this whole area of the 309 to 3, even 316 area, it's kind of resistance that it needs to break. I think it is going to break it. And the monthly chart is really starting to improve a lot in terms of the candle, but we've got a whole week to go before this candle is done for March. So I'm not going to talk about the monthly chart other than to say that. MACD histogram is finally starting to improve and the stochastic has finally turned from under 20% to 24%. These are all good things. So to, to sum it up, my, I'm, I'm positive in the sense that I'm looking at higher prices for the QQQ. Uh, let me just do this right here. So this is peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And now it's got a brand new A, Yes. So it, it, it confirms what I'm looking at in the rectangle formation of the 120 minute chart because that's what you want to look at. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. It's one of those days I can tell I have to go back here. I have to type in 120 minute chart. Uh, no. Oh, what a damn nuisance. All right, folks, just give me a second. I'll do this right now. Uh, what am I looking at? Days? No, days. I don't want days. I want minutes. And I want 120, oops, 120 minutes. There you go. Okay, we're all set. There you go. 120 minute chart is right there. So you've got your rectangle. I need to see a push much higher into the 315, 316 area. That'll be very good. Now, what would be the negate, the strength of the cues? Even if it's just short term, a slide under 306, a close under 306 says, oh, oh, I don't know what you're thinking about. I have to take a lot more effort before I can build up strength to get into the 316s. Probably I'm going to go 309 to 304 before that. I don't think so. I think this is a market that's restless for some kind of an upside break. I don't know if it'll get it, but that's what I'm thinking. And the Dow, the question was the Dow. In the Dow, we're looking at... Um, a lot of work needs to be done to get to leg C, but if it does that this week at any point, if it goes to leg C above 32,762, not on a closing basis, just has to get there, that's going to be a really good sign to say 32,900 becomes the target in March. A lot of things going on, but that's what I'm looking at. Uh, please review the two-year bond. Oh, give me that to your bond again. Uh, so for, why, why do I not get it? I had it and I wrote it down because it's just not one of the things I use all the time. And I know that Coda had asked uh, me and he gave me a symbol TYU something. What was that, TYU? <clears throat> you? No, I don't think so. Nah. <clears throat> I, I don't have the symbol for the two year. But let me show you something else. And let me go back to this TLT. <clears throat> I never had a chance to show my subscribers this over the weekend because I was not available in my office to be able to do it. And I haven't yet quite figured out uh, closed workspace. I haven't yet quite figured out, um, there we go, how to do this remotely. I will figure it out. I'm going to have to do that at some point because I'll be away. Um, but there we go. So I'm looking at, this is the, there we are. So we're looking at the three that my, my triple yield bonds, my weekly triple R uh, to UA. Okay. I
which I think my, I'll get there right now. So let's just get this up. This is my triple deal charts, the 30, the 10, the 5 deal. And let's get that refreshed. All right, I'll do the T. I in a moment. I'll be right. How's it going? TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, so yes, yeah, so going to, uh, back to the question about adding to the TLT or the TUA, which the TUA is the uh, two year. Uh, I think I'd fight at this moment in the very short term. I would just hold off. I'd hold off maybe just for the moment, uh, maybe a little later in the week, I'll say yes. I think the market is trying to rally, and I, I got a feeling that bonds will pull back a little bit, just as the dollar is, look, the dollar is <clears throat> pulling back a little bit. It should be rallying. It's not. Uh, it should be rallying because gold is coming down. Gold is coming down. Why? Because the XLF is attempting to rally. I, said, I mean, it's not great. It's just attempting on the day. And that's going to happen a few times, and it might not succeed by holding the 30 level, but it is rallying. And that's just telling you, the big crisis itself is not over, but the fear factor, I think, is just lessened at this particular moment. Okay, so within that context, let me just go to the VIX index. Uh, I will, uh, there are a couple of stocks, nobody was in a hurry about the stocks um, they wanted to look at today, just in terms of, in a general, so I'll get to it tomorrow. <clears throat> 2145 on the, on the VIX, it's under the 200 period moving average. If this can stay low, if we can get back into the 20s, that's going to be a big thing for the market. FXI, 
uh, someone said, GT said, puts on the FXI. You know, I think right now on the FXI, although it's not great, it's down 60 cents at 28, 23. I think if the market, the general, our market rallies a bit, I think it could, it too could rally. I don't think it's going to be the big move, but I'd just be careful about puts. If anything, I'd be, I'd be, I'd rather be looking at calls if you're only looking at options. Uh, GDX, uh, GDX, I didn't get to. GDX has pulled back some, but it's holding quite nicely. It's a 31.27. So I don't think, and it's GDX is telling us the whole crisis for the finance is not over. But just this particular phase, maybe there's a brief, that's really what I'm doing. I'm favoring the market right now. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned for the, uh, for the rest of the program. Steve Rhodes is up. Tommy starts us off at nine. And we've got uh, Thinko Swap. And we've got uh, Larry Pesavento. And we've got 